The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to lesson 30 of your distance education program in chemistry for upper seat science. I am Lonnie Gingu, your chemistry teacher. We are still on the topic matter, properties, and transformation, and the subtopic redox equilibra. The subtopic redox equilibra will be treated in the following lessons. Terms related to redox, oxidation numbers and naming of inorganic compounds, balancing redox equations, half cells, standard electrode potentials, uses of standard electrode potentials, part one, uses of standard electrode potentials, part two, cell diagrams, factors affecting electrode potentials, and finally, corrosion and its prevention. Before beginning today's lesson, I would like us to correct the assignment we had at the end of our last lesson. Assignment. Balance the redox equation where one mole of iodate ions react, reacts with one mole of iodide ion to give iodine in an acidic medium. Solution. Looking at the equation, Iodide, the oxidation number of iodide of iodine in iodide changes from negative one in iodide to zero in iodine. So the oxidation half equation will be two iodide giving iodine. Also, the oxidation number of iodine changes from plus five in iodide to zero in iodine. This is a decrease. So the reduction half equation is two iodate ions giving iodine. The first half equation is oxidation half equation because there is a decrease in the oxidation number of iodine or there is an increase in the oxidation number of iodine from negative to zero is an increase. The second half equation is a reduction half equation because there is a decrease in the oxidation number of IOT from, uh, from plus 5 to 0 is a reduction. Step 2. Add the numbers of electrons lost or gain. For the oxidation number of IOT to increase from negative 1 to 0, each iodide ion must lose an electron. And since there are two iodide ions, in the reaction, two electrons will be lost. Therefore, the oxidation equation will be two iodide giving one iodine molecule and two moles of electrons. For the oxidation number of iodine to decrease from plus five to zero, each iodide ion will gain each IOD atom will gain five electrons. Will gain five electrons. And since there are two atoms of IOD in a radical, in an iodate radical, 
10 electrons will be gained. And so the reduction equation will become 2 ionates plus 10 electrons, giving 1 IOD. Step 3, balance charges by adding hydrogen. Looking at the oxidation half equation, there are two negative charges to the right and two negative charges to the left. Charge is balanced, so there is no need to add hydrogen ions. And so the oxidation of equation remains 2 iodide, giving IOD plus 2 electrons. Looking at the reduction half equation, there are ne uh, 12 negative charges to the left and no negative charge to the right. And so 12 hydrogen ions will be added to the left in order to balance charges. The idea here is to cancel the 12 negative charges to the left in order that there will be zero charge to the left and zero to the right. Therefore, the reduction half equation is 2 ionic plus 10 electrons plus 12 hydrogen ions giving IOD. Step 4. Balance oxygen atoms by adding water. Looking at the oxidation half equation, there are no oxygen atoms, so there is no need to add water molecules. And so the oxidation equation remains 2 iodide giving IOD plus 2 electrons. On the other hand, looking, on the looking at the reduction half equation, there are 6 oxygen atoms to the left and no oxygen to the right. So 6 water will be added to the right in order to balance the oxygen atoms. Therefore, the reduction equation is 2 ionates plus 10 electrons plus 12 hydrogen ions giving 1 IOD and 6 water. Step 5. Balance the numbers of electrons in both equations. Looking at both half equations, you notice that there are 2 electrons in the oxidation half equation and 10 electrons on the reduction in the reduction half equation. So in order to balance the number of electrons in both half equation, we multiply the oxidation half equation by 5. And so the oxidation half equation becomes 10 iodide giving 5 IOD and 10 electrons. And the reduction half equation remains 2 iodide plus 10 electrons plus 12 hydrogen ions giving 1 IOD and 6 water. Step 6. Add the two half equations. To add the two half equations, we add the species to the left of both half equations, then we add those to the right. Therefore, we add 10 iodide to 2 iodate plus and 12 hydrogen ions. The electrons are left out because they will cancel out. And then we to the right we have 5 IOD plus 5 IOD plus 1 IOD plus 6 water. And so the overall equation is 5 iodide plus 1 iodate plus 6 hydrogen ions giving 3 IOD giving 3 water. Today's lesson is titled Half Cells. The outline of the lesson is as follows. Objectives, prerequisite, real life situation, half cells, evaluation, assignment, and references. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define half cells, define electrode potentials, define standard electrode potentials. You should be able to Describe the standard hydrogen electrode and state the functions of the platinized platinum in the standard hydrogen electrode. To test your previous knowledge that will be useful in this lesson, answer these questions. Question 1. Define oxidation in terms of electron transfer. Question 2. 
Define reduction in terms of electron transfer. Question one. In terms of electron transfer, oxidation is the loss of electrons by a reacting species. In terms of electron transfer, question two, reduction is the gain of electrons by a reacting species. Question three, balance the redox equation below in a basic medium. Looking at the redox equation, we discover that the oxidation number of iodine changes from negative one in iodine to zero in IUD. And the oxidation number of manganese changes from plus seven in the permanganate IO to plus four in the manganese two oxide. Therefore, the oxidation of equation will be two iodide giving IUD. And the reduction of equation will be permanganate giving manganese two plus, uh, manganese four oxide. Step two, add the numbers of electrons lost or gain. For the oxidation number of iodine to change from negative one to zero, each iodide ion will lose an electron. Therefore, the oxidation half equation will be called two iodide giving one iodine and two electrons. Also, for the oxidation number of manganese to change from plus seven in permanganate ion to plus four in manganese four oxide, each manganese atom will gain three electrons. And so the reduction half equation becomes manganese permanganate plus three electrons giving manganese four oxide. Step three, balance charges by adding hydroxide ions. Now in the oxidation half equation, there are two negative charges to the left and two negative charges to the right. So the charge is balanced and so there is no need to add hydroxide ion. And so the oxidation of equation remains two iodide giving IUD plus two electrons. Looking at the reduction half equation, there are four negative charges to the left and no negative charge to the right. And so to balance the charges, Four hydroxide ions will be added to the right to balance the charges. And therefore, the reduction of equation becomes permanganate plus three electrons, giving manganese four oxide plus four hydroxide ions. Step four, balance oxygen atoms by adding water. Now, in the oxidation of equation, there are no oxygen atoms, so no water will be added. So the oxidation of equation remains two iodide giving IOD plus two electrons. In the reduction half equation, there are four oxygen to the right, to the left, and six oxygen atoms to the right. And so two water molecules will be added to the left to balance the oxygen. And so the reduction half equation becomes the manganese plus three electrons plus two water to give manganese four oxide plus four hydroxide ions. Step 5. Balance the numbers of electrons in both equations. Now, to balance the numbers of electrons in both equations, we multiply the oxidation half equation by 3 and the reduction half equation by 2. And so, the oxidation half equation becomes 6 iodide giving 3 IOD plus 6 electrons. And the reduction half equation becomes 2 permanganate plus 6 electrons plus 4 water giving two manganese four oxide plus eight hydroxide ions. Step six, add the two half equations. We added it, when we add the two half equations, we have an overall equation of six iodide plus two permanganate plus four water, giving three IUD plus two manganese four oxide plus eight hydroxide ions. Real life situation. In a remote region of a country, lemon fruits are cultivated in large quantities and there is no electrical energy supply. During a chemistry lesson, 
A teacher used lemon fruit to generate electricity and light an electric bulb. On the picture, you have lemon fruit connected to a bulb using connecting wires. He inserted a copper nail and a zinc nail into a lemon fruit, connected them to a lead bulb in place of a battery. You have the copper nail and the zinc nail connecting wires, lemon fruit, and the lead bulb. The problem here is to explain how lemon fruit will generate electricity and light an electric bulb. We shall come back to this life situation towards the end of this subtopic. I urge you to stay focused. Half cell. A half cell can be defined as a structure containing a conductive metal and a surrounding conductive electrolyte separated by a naturally occurring Helmont double layer. I repeat, a half cell is a structure containing a conductive metal and a surrounding conductive electrolyte separated by a naturally occurring Helmont double layer. A half cell can be produced by dipping a metal rod into a solution of its ions. When a metal rod is dipped into a solution, of its ions, an equilibrium is set up between the metal rod and its ions in solution. The metal may be reduced or oxidized. For example, when zinc metal or zinc rod is dipped into a solution containing zinc ions, the zinc is oxidized. That is, zinc atoms on the metal rod will be attracted into solutions. As a result, they will ionize, leaving behind their electrons on the metal rod and enter the solution as zinc ions. The metal rod that has accumulated electrons will become will have an overall negative charge. And the portion of the electrolyte close to the metal rod we have an overall positive charge. And then a Helmut double layer will be generated. We have a positive layer in the electrolyte close to the metal rod and a negative layer on the metal rod. This is a Helmut double layer. On the other hand, when copper, a copper rod is dipped into a solution containing copper ions, the copper is reduced. That is, copper ions in the solution, they cling to the copper rod and attract electrons out of the rod. As a result, the copper atoms in the rod that lose electrons will then have an overall positive charge. And the region of the electrolyte close to the copper rod will have an overall negative charge. So another Helmholtz double linear is generated. A voltage appears at the interface between the metal rod and the electrolyte due to a transfer of charge species across the interface. It is important to note that this voltage between the metal rod or the voltage in the Helmholtz double linear cannot be measured directly by the use of a voltmeter. This is because in order to measure the voltage of the Helmholtz double layer, you will need a voltmeter and two conducting wires. One of the conducting wires will, will be connected to the metal rod and the other deep into the solution. But as soon as the connecting wire is deep into the solution, there will be an equilibrium established between the metal of the wire and the ions it forms in solution. This equilibrium generates a second Helmont double layer. And the presence of this second Helmont double layer complicates the measurement of the, uh, the voltage in the first Helmont double layer. It is, however, possible to measure the difference in voltage between two Helmont double layers 
when two half cells are connected together by means of a salt bridge. The standard hydrogen electrode has been chosen as a reference electrode to enable the measurement of the difference in voltage between two half cells when they are connected together by means of a salt bridge. Electrode potential. Electrode potential can be defined as the electromotive force of a voltage cell built from a standard reference electrode and another electrode to be characterized. I repeat, electrode potential is the electromotive force of a voltage cell built from a standard reference electrode and another electrode to be characterized. The electrode potential of a half cell depends on the following factors. Concentration of ions in solution, the pH of the electrolyte, temperature, complex formation, and the tendency to form hydrated compounds. Standard electrode potential. Standard electrode potential is the electrode potential of a half cell measured against the standard hydrogen electrode under standard conditions. I repeat, standard electrode potential is the electrode potential of a half cell measured against the standard hydrogen electrode under standard conditions. The standard conditions for the measurement of standard electrode potentials are ionic concentration of one moles per cubic decimeter, gas pressure of one atmosphere of 760 millimeters of mercury, temperature of 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin, and the use of a platinum electrode in cases where the half cell does not contain a solid metal. Standard hydrogen electrode. The standard hydrogen electrode consists of hydrogen gas at a pressure of one atmosphere and a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius bubbled over a platinized platinum electrode. I repeat, the standard hydrogen electrode consists of hydrogen gas at a pressure of one atmosphere and a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius bubbled over a platinized platinum electrode. On the screen, you can see the platinized platinum electrode dipped into a solution of hydrochloric acid of concentration 1 moles per cubic decimeter and hydrogen gas at the pressure of 1 atmosphere being bubbled over the platinized platinum electrode. When the hydrogen gas is bubbled over the platinum electrode, the hydrogen is absorbed onto the surface of the platinum electrode and an equilibrium is established between the hydrogen gas and its ions in solution, whereby one mole of hydrogen gas will be in equilibrium with two moles of hydrogen ions and two moles of electrons. A voltage is developed between the interface, in the interface between the platinum and the electrolyte. This voltage in the standard hydrogen electrode is given an arbitrary value of zero volt. Functions of the platinum electrode in the standard hydrogen electrode. The platinum electrode acts as an inert metal connection between the hydrogen gas and the electrolyte. It allows hydrogen gas to be absorbed onto its surface. The platinum electrode allows equilibrium to be established quickly due to the presence of platinum black that acts as a catalyst. Other reference electrodes that can be used to measure standard electrode potentials are the calomel electrode, the saturated calomel electrode, the silver silver chloride electrode, the mercury who application. Answer this question. Is it possible to measure the exact voltage developed in the Helmholtz double layer? Explain your answer. Is it possible to measure the exact voltage 
develop in the helm of double linear, explain your answer. Answer. It is not possible to measure the exact voltage developed in the Helmut double layer. This is because to measure this voltage directly, we will need a voltmeter and two pieces of connecting wires, one connected to the electrode and the other deep into the solution. As soon as the wire is deep into the solution, another equilibrium will be set up. This time, between the metal from which the wire is made and the ions it gives in solution, another Helmholtz double layer will be introduced in the solution. This new Helmholtz double layer renders the measurement of the voltage developed in the first Helmholtz double layer impossible. Recall, it is important to remember that a structure containing a conductive metal and a surrounding conductive electrolyte separated by a naturally occurring Helmholtz double layer is known as a half cell. The voltage that appears at the interface between the metal rod and the electrolyte in a half cell is the, poten is the electrode potential. The standard hydrogen electrode is a reference electrode that enables the measurement of standard electrode potentials. The standard hydrogen electrode consists of hydrogen gas at a pressure of one atmosphere and a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius bubbled over a platinized platinum electrode. The standard conditions for measuring electrode potentials are ionic concentration of one mole per cubic decimeter, gas pressure of one atmosphere and a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. Evaluation. To know how well you have followed this lesson, answer these questions. Question 1. What is a half cell? Question 2. What is a standard hydrogen electron? Answers. Question 1. What is a half cell? A half cell is a structure containing a conductive metal and the surrounding conductive electrolyte separated by a naturally occurring Helmholtz double layer. Question 2. What is a standard hydrogen electrode? A standard hydrogen electrode consists of hydrogen gas at a pressure of one atmosphere and a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius bubbled over a platinized platinum electrode. I repeat, the standard hydrogen electrode consists of hydrogen gas at a pressure of one atmosphere and a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius bubbled over a platinized platinum electrode. Assignment. Before our next lesson, I would like you to answer these questions. Question 1. What are the functions of the platinized platinum electrode in the standard hydrogen electrode? Question 2. Name two other reference electrodes. References. Complete advanced level chemistry by Gule Emanuel Eno. Chemistry in context by Graham Hill and John Holman. Understanding chemistry by G.K. Keats and others. And lastly, the internet. We've come to the end of this lesson. Our next lesson will be on standard electro potentials. See you in the next lesson. <laughs> Ngani la kiri watere ndong Esa kina bia jinkido Mane tambia ninya ne injo bia yen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tama tonge tam zabike Tam tam tama mote tam zabike Mane tambia ninya ne injo bia yen